There you go, Mr. Bill Kennison. Thank you, thank you, and welcome to the Gospel According to Kennison, and I am your illustrious host, I am the man, with the beautiful partner, mm. Sherry, mm, yes. and we welcome you to our program. And uh, we've had a busy weekend, Thursday night, or Good Friday morning, night. Good morning, Don and Cheryl Morin. Yep, good morning to Don and Cheryl, they're either at horse races or cruising, they got the life. <laughs> they have the life. Oh, you got to come to San Antonio when the big horse races is going on. I don't know when that is, but we'll have to check on it. Yeah, I think we're more rodeos here than... Well, they have that big... Oh, do they? Yeah. yeah. Joe Sumter, good morning. It's the Sunday. Joe. The Joe and his beautiful wife. Don says they're going to Santa Anita today. How do, you know, I'm just a prophet. I'm just a prophet. I just bring the message. Good morning, Sharon Stein and Stan. Love both of them, and I can't even imagine what they're going through. And Gary Witt said he's here. Who? Gary Witt. I, I, I gotta, I gotta talk to Gary. See what's going on here. All of a sudden, he's early and all this. I don't know. I don't know. And Jack Friedman says YouTube page. Yep. Like the YouTube page or subscribe. I guess subscribe to the YouTube page. And we're getting quite a bit of uh, people that are watching that. And they're not counting our program. Good right morning, on. Warren Bunn. Danny James. All right, Danny James from Chicago. I guess he makes fantastic barbecue from what I understand. I'm going to find out one of these days. I'm going to find out. Go ahead. Well, if I, you say go I ahead, know. and then I say something. I know it. All right. Well, anyway, so we had a, a busy weekend. We've got our grandchildren uh, with us for this weekend. And uh, Friday night. Thursday night. Thursday night, we were at uh, Scarlet School for their big whatever they had. Man, they, you know, for... For kids, sixth, seventh, eighth grade and stuff, they, they, they had a good choir, each one of them. Good choir, good band, they yeah. really did. They, they were very good. Then the next day, going into the evening, we had Finnegan School. And uh, walked around, and more like a fair or... It was a spooktacular. Yeah, spooktacular. I never seen too much spook, but there was a lot of spectacular there. And uh, then yesterday... We had a birthday party for Finnegan's friend, so we went to we went to lunch first with Lisa and Dave, and then we yes, went to the yes, birthday we did. party. Anyway, so we've had we've had a great a great weekend. Good morning, John Lutz. I was yes. Good morning to John and Anthony and that whole uh, clan over there. I was uh, at the at the birthday party, and it was at a place called uh, Air Utopia. Utopia. And where they can jump on trampolines. They got so much stuff in there. It's un unbelievable. And Sherry and I were sitting there and watching all the kids and watching over our kids. And I could not help but think of uh, Israel. When Hamas snuck in in the middle of the night like a thief. And what they did to kids like we were watching and playing with yesterday is un... Well, I guess everything's forgivable, but it'd be awful difficult for me. I told you last week, I guess I'm not as spiritual as I thought I was because I uh, I think anybody that does that forfeits their their right to exist in this, in this particular level of their existence. And I don't... I don't I'm not backing off on that. And I don't understand. Sure, now that I'm on it, and we'll get to our message, and it's going to be great news for you. But while I'm while I'm on this, I, I you know, you you find out how people are under pressure, the real them. And when I watch these, I'm not going to be real diplomatic about it. When I see these idiots and these disturbed people at Harvard, at Princeton, at Berkeley. I can go on and on and watch them protest 
on behalf of the Hamas and the Palestinians, the Palestinians, that that is mind blowing to me. I wonder if they'd be so apt to take their side if they broke in their house in the middle of the night, took their baby and cut their head off. Or maybe take your, your teenage daughter and rape and torture her until she's dead and then drag her down the street by the hair of her head. Folks, I'm sorry, I'm not that spiritual. So I stand, and I made this very, very, very clear, I stand with Israel. And I said, when this all happened, I said, they picked the wrong people, and you think they should know. This goes back history. This goes hundreds of years. They, they, we just talked last week about them being slaves in Egypt. This has went on for, we didn't even recognize them as a nation till 1948. I mean, folks, you better believe I stand with, with Israel. I'm standing on the winning side, and they will win, regardless of what Biden does, regardless of what he says. Israel will win. They're messing with God's people. They're messing with God's people. All right. Is there anything else you want to add before we get into our lesson? Um, John Lett says that he's in need of prayer. John? I, that's what he said. In well, I'll have to find out later today what's going on there then. Tammy Meyer. Tammy and... Michael Mesmer. Michael Mesmer. Man, he's he works all the time, but man, he's good. He's a hypnotist and a magician. Best I've ever seen. If, you ever, if he's ever in your area and you can go and see him perform, it, it, it it's mind-blowing. Yes. And some of the people... Mag, good morning, Maggie Carlson. Yeah. And Bronwyn Barry, or Barry Bronwyn, is watching. Good morning. All right. Well, we want to minister and teach on something this morning. Change is an act of freedom. That's the truth. She said, Chris Kyer always needs prayer. <laughs> you know what? And he does. I can speak for that personally. No, we love Chris. Michael Mesmer says, thanks, Bill. Well, I would expect to see my royalty check then. Now, I love Michael and his wife. She's very talented, by she the way. Really she is. won many awards and everything. Change is an act of freedom. It's not an act of binding people. It's an act of freedom. With everything going on in the world right now, I have great news for you. Great news. There is hope. There is enormous hope. There is an extraordinary opportunity. But you must be willing right now to seize the day. To seize it. You must decide here and now, in these days and times, not in some far off distant future, whether the world is to be fashioned with tools of devastation, or tools of recreation. The words of hate or words of hope with acts of war and acts of peace, with thoughts of fear and thoughts of love. You must decide, and you have to decide today, you must decide whether you're going to be destructive or you're going to be constructive. You need to get out of the notion of, in your mind, that the Jews are fighting that, that war a long ways away in Israel and in Gaza. No. You say, why? I don't want to be a bearer of bad news. But folks, the way our border is, I'd say it's not a, not a chance, it's a probability that we're going to face terrorist acts in this country right here. I, I, for the life of me, some things I don't understand. Harvard has over $53 billion in their chest. $53 billion. And from what I understand, the majority of that has been donated by Jewish alumni. 
Well, folks, I went to the University of Illinois. They, if they allow what, what these universities are allowing on their campus right now, I wouldn't send them another penny. They wouldn't get another dime out of me until they learn to be able to control their place of education. Listen, I want to be constructive. I don't want to be destructive. You can destroy yourself utterly or you can recreate yourself anew in this next version of the greatest vision you have ever held about who you are. And that's what we're getting to. Who you are as individuals and as a species called the human race. Who you are. How can we recreate ourselves now? How can we do it anew? We need to be recreated from the beginning of how do we create a new human? How do we create a new society? How do we create a new spirituality? How do we create a new politics? A new economy? A new world? How do we do this? You begin at the level of belief. At the level of belief. I know there's plenty of preachers this morning that are up teaching and preaching to their people that, you know, this is the this is the end times. You want to know what's going on? Read the book of Revelation, and you're going to have a, a Jesus is going to come riding on a horse, and, and he's going to have a sword coming out of his mouth, and there all the armies of the world are going to be in the valley of Megiddo, and it's going to be called Armageddon. Honey, I know all I know all that. I, I was I was trained for all that. The great tribulation, the thousand years of persecution, I know all that. The problem is that's not us. That's not us. I'm telling you that the root cause of humanity's problems is what you believe. That's the very root of it. Yet many people will not believe this. They won't. They just won't. They would rather believe the beliefs that have produced the unbelievable. Your current belief systems have produced unbelievable destruction. All out of religion. Unbelievable devastation. Unbelievable horror. My God, just, just look on the news and you can see it, although I don't encourage you to watch the news. Unbelievable cruelty. Unbelievable sadness and suffering. Unbelievable oppression and anger and hatred and conflict and warring and killing. I, in my lifetime, I haven't ever seen what's going on over there. I've never seen anything like that. You see, the ways in which human beings behave, the things human beings do to each other are unbelievable. They're unbelievable. How any of us could support a group like Hamas is unbelievable. Is unbelievable. Yet we got campuses you know, I saw something, I think it was yesterday or must, maybe it was on, on Friday, and there was a protest at the Capitol. And the protest was pro Hamas and Palestinian and against the Jews. Nobody, I didn't see on the news, no one called it an insurrection like they did January 6th. I thought that was interesting. No one even called it a protest. You know what they called it? Their, they called it a First Amendment. How did they put it? A First Amendment gathering. Folks, it's time that we start changing things. We need to start changing things. You see... Many humans would rather accept what they have believed than change the things that they do believe. 
Let me repeat it. Most people, or not most, well, maybe, have would rather accept what they have believed. I know that I changed when I was a young man. I, I was a teenager, and I went, you know what? I don't believe this. I don't, I don't, I don't believe this. Why would God treat us like that? But you know what? They'd rather believe what they've always believed rather than change the things that they believe. But it's not hopeless. I know it sounds up to this point. It's, hope. it's not hopeless. Because for the very first time in a very long number, the number of those people that are willing, unwilling to change their beliefs is dropping. You see, the number of people who see their old beliefs is, is no longer. Honey, what, what was good? There was a song that if it was good for mom and pop, then it's good enough for me. No, no, it's not. It's not. Give me that old-time religion. No, 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 I don't want the old-time religion. I want a fresh word from God that identifies my my reality of who I am, a child of God. I'm trying to stay calm because there's so much important stuff I want to tell you. You see, the number of those who see that their old beliefs no longer work are growing. That's why you're listening to us. We started when we started this program, I don't know, five years ago, six years ago, whatever it was. I guess more like five years ago. And when we started this, I was really just doing this to patronize a bunch of folks that we had started a church there in Upland, but because of running a theater and a church in the same thing, it just it just did not work. And so I thought, well, for all these people that are coming to the church, I'll go on Facebook for 30 minutes on Sunday, and it'll it'll work it'll wear itself out in in a few weeks, and we'll all go back to our regular life. It went the other direction. You say why? People are willing to give up what they have always believed to receive what God's got for us. Woo! Man, I'm excited this morning. You see that number is rapidly reaching what I call critical mass. And what you can do is help it get there. Now here is something you should know. Critical mass is not that difficult to achieve. I'm going to explain all this. It's not, that, it's not that hard. First, it's not as high a number as most people think. It takes a very small percentage of the whole to form sufficient mass to affect the whole. In other words, it just takes a small number of people. If you don't think so, look at the six individuals that control what they call the far left in the Democratic Party. Look at them. Six individuals and look what they're able to control in that Democratic Party. Now the Republicans aren't, aren't getting off on this either. Let me tell you that the Republicans can't even get a Speaker of the House because of eight people. Eight people control right now the Republican Party. So we think we have a democracy. You've got six people in the Democratic Party controlling it. You've got eight people in the Republican Party controlling it. Folks, it's going to change. It's going to change. It only takes a small percentage of the whole to form the sufficient mass to affect the whole and affect everyone. Critical mass is not one more than half. Not a, it's not a majority. It's not even 25%. It's not even 30%. It's not even 10% of the people. Listen, listen. Critical mass can be achieved with less than 5% of the whole moving in one direction. Look at the Christians. After, by the way, I saw the most humorous thing, or I, I thought it was humorous this past week, and said Jesus was not a Christian. 
Muhammad was not a Buddhist. And they went they, they, they went on and you know, on all the leaders, and that all these movements were made after they died. Critical mass doesn't take many. Doesn't take many. We started out with nothing. We run over 3,000 people that watch us live every Sunday now. Put it in another way. Make it really simple. It only takes one domino to make the rest of the dominoes fall. Have you ever played dominoes? Well, it just takes one. And it'll knock them all down. Put it another way. What is needed now is a small people, a number of people, a tiny percentage who are willing to become in their nations, in their cities, I'm talking to you, in their towns, in their villages, in their neighborhoods, in their churches and synagogues and temples and mosques and community halls and political party meetings, even in their home. The first domino. The first domino. Man. Now I'm starting to get excited. Calm down, Bill. You see, there has not been an expansion of your theologies. You know those theologies that, that you have dedicated your life to? There has not been a change or an expansion of your theologies in a hundred generations. Not a hundred years, a hundred generations. You ought to think about that. The time has come for you to have more courage than any war has ever called upon you for, than any hardship ever demanded, than any suffering that has ever been required. The time has come for us to get courage. The time has come for you to confront yourself at the level of belief. Woo! Bill, this is good stuff. The reason this will require so much courage is that your beliefs form the basis of who you think you are. So some of you have grew up like me. You were Pentecostal or you went to that kind of a church. You could have been assembly. You could have been... Baptist or, or any of that. But you must challenge yourself. You must challenge your society. You must ask, is this who we are? Folks, is this, is this who we are? What's going on? Is this who we choose to be? Is this the only way we can live is to kill everybody? Is this the only way we know how to behave? Somebody, somebody said, well, then I guess that you believe that Israel should just uh, negotiate another peace, honey. They have done that. They have done that. Sometimes it's time to stand up. Get the courage to change your beliefs and you can change everything else in the world. Do we have the courage to accept the answer that our searching is going to uncover? Are you guys got the courage to face that? I do. And it's brought joy, happiness, success into my life. I'm happy when somebody said, Bill, everything you touch turns to gold. No, it doesn't. But I believe that everything I touch will be changed. Everything you touch will be changed. Do we have the courage? You see, you can't do this alone. Nor can one charismatic leader or spiritual teacher produce a miracle. I can't do it. And we don't have someone that would come around every once in a while like Gandhi or, or Jesus Christ or Muhammad or any number of them. 
You see, the time for individual gurus who came along and changed the world is over. You're not going to have another one get up and, and change the world with a, with a new religion or a new spirituality. So what can be done to motivate people to step up? Time to step up. Well, the excitement of new possibilities will do it. The excitement of new possibilities and the assurance that they do have the power to change the world. You have the power. Don't keep waiting. I told Sherry this past week because she was talking about changing. You know, the world ought to change this. The world ought to change that. And I said, Sherry, let me tell you what. Uh, I think it was Gandhi. I think I got it here. Oh, here it is. Sherry, since you're standing here, Gandhi said, seek not, therefore, to change the world. He said, don't seek to change the world. Seek to be the change and you that you wish to see in the world. You want to change the world? Then start with you. Start with you. Simple little things like, like being a millionaire. Simple little things like being healthy, being happy, full of joy, full of peace. You see, if you think you're impotent, other words, powerless, you will do nothing. You'll just, you'll just go to churches and sit there and hear the same thing you've heard from the very first time you went there. And they're having a heyday right now. Anything bad that comes, churches have a heyday. More people come. Sherry, you and I, Pastor, we already know. Right now, they got some churches are running more people than they've ever run. You say, why? People are afraid, but they're not afraid enough to change the beliefs because the beliefs is what has caused what is going on. You see the excitement of new possibilities and the assurance that they do have the power to change the world. If people really believe there is something they can do about it, and they then they will do it. If they believe they can do something, they will. The human race is still acting as it has been acting for centuries. Been acting like this way before us, folks. When what you are doing is a reflection of what you are being, rather than an attempt to create what you wish you were being, you will know that you have produced lasting change in yourself. That is what produces lasting change in the world. I want you to remember this. And we'll close. You can't do peaceful. You can only be peaceful. You can't do loving. You can only be loving. You cannot do unified. You can only be unified. Do not seek to change the world. Seek first to change yourself. And that will change the world. Somebody said, well, they're just a few of us. Do I have to go back and tell you all that stuff again? About the critical mass? It only takes a few. When you achieve that, your actions will automatically change. I remember, I don't know, I had to be a, a young man and, and or a teenager, even maybe younger than that. And I remember uh, uh, some, some preacher came by, came by and he was, he was preaching and he was, you know, pretty much telling them that uh, you know, they, they have to change and everything else. Well, let me tell you something. Do not change your beliefs because you want other people to change theirs. Share we, everywhere we go, I don't know, I don't know what it is about us. I think there's a sign on me or something. 
sign on Sherry goes, will you talk to us? Because everywhere we go, people we don't know come up and they'll just start talking about their, their family problems or their job or, or whatever. And I found out, and some, you know, I, I don't know, a year or two ago, I remember I had somebody come up and, or asked me, said, you know, how many are you getting saved? And I said, none. And it just blew them, what, 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 what do you mean none? I said, it's not my job to save people. God did that 2,000 years ago when Jesus died on a cross and paid the price who for me that wasn't even born yet paid the price for all those that had died before him. All the, uh, the price, he paid the price for all those that were there, those that had crucified him, everything else. He paid the price for all of us. Change is an act of freedom. Change is an act of freedom, not an act of compliance. You change because you're free to change. You don't change because somebody tries to make you be compliant and, and change. Change is an act of freedom. Now I'm going to close with this, with what I told Sherry this past week, and I just told her a few minutes ago. Gandhi said, Seek not, therefore, to change the world. Can you imagine somebody getting up and doing this back in 60, 70, 80 years ago? Seek to be the change you wish to see in the world. Heavenly Father, I thank you for this time. Lord, give us the courage. Give us the courage to be that little group that affects the critical mass. Lord, let us be the change that others can see that when they're doing without, we're doing with plenty. Just like you took care of the children of Israel all the way through the Bible. But back in the days they left Egypt and you fed them every morning for 40 years with manna from heaven. You gave them water out in the middle of the desert. Their clothes never ran out. God, let us move into that position with you. I ask that you touch everyone that needs a touch this morning. Cause a healing to come to everyone that needs a healing. God, give everyone listening to me a secret to prosperity and, and success. I'll give you all the praise. Amen. I love you. Sherry loves you. God loves you. God bless America and God bless Israel. And Robert Urie says, love you, Brother Bill. And Paulette says, she loves your pink tie and shirt. You did it. Well, this pink, I've got three of them. I've worn this entire month. I don't know. What is the date today? 22nd. Then I guess they'll see it next Sunday. Yes, sir. Because <laughs> I had vowed to myself, I'm going to wear a pink tie every Sunday for the month of October. And Sherry, you and I have done our part in trying to raise funds for for uh, the Pink Dr. Journey. Journeyfoundation.org. Go on and donate. And just, uh, they have a website you can go to. Good morning, Jeanette. All right, love you all. Have a great week. And I'll, I'll, sometimes their names go by so fast I don't get to read them. So oh, I have quick people. Bill will, Bill will respond to all of you. What? You'll respond. Sure, I don't have time to sit and answer every one of them. I love them and they know that. But right. we'll see what happens. Have a good week. All right, love you.